and showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Channel Pro 5-Minute Roundup. A look at news, trends, and tips for the SMB channel in five minutes or thereabouts. My name is Rich Freeman. I'm executive editor of the Channel Pro Network. I am also a host of this program. I am joined side by side this week, uh, at least on uh, video and Zoom, as I am every week by your other co-host, Eric Simpson, the business transformation and improvement advisor to MSPs and other IT providers. Eric, hola from Mexico. Hola from south of the border, Mexico. So this is one of the rare occasions, Rich, where you are further south from me than and you normally are. You're normally much further north. This is very true. I hadn't considered this. I actually figured out a way to sneak down south of you, and uh, and that is because I am uh, I'm recording over a a very weak uh, internet connection from Cancun, Mexico, where I have been attending the NerdioCon uh, partner event, Nerdio's partner event uh, here this week. Yeah, and uh, from our you know pre. Uh, you know, pre-episode conversation, it sounds like it's been a very successful event. Yeah, you know, it really was. They drew a good crowd. Um, they had some interesting news to announce, which we'll be talking about in just uh, a moment here. And uh, you know what? This is the first time Nerdia has done this kind of an event on this scale um, before. And I can speak from personal experience at Channel Pro. The first time you do something like that, it is a very difficult thing to pull off. And they did a great job. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, to your coverage, uh, your top story for us today from NerdioCon. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's an interesting one. This is what they announced at the show this week. So um, and Nerdio is probably best known uh, among our audience for a product that they introduced a little over a year ago called Nerdio Manager for MSP. And it's basically a management console for Azure Virtual Desktop, Microsoft 365, Windows 365. You can provision uh, and manage the, uh, those systems and deliver those systems through that product. What they announced this week is that they are integrating that system. They are pulling some functionality into that system from a tool called Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Now, a lot of folks in the audience here are probably at least a little bit familiar with Microsoft Endpoint Manager. It combines functionality from the Intune product and the um, Configuration Manager product into one platform that allows uh, an administrator to uh, manage uh, Windows PCs, Windows servers, but also Macs uh, and uh, mobile devices running iOS or Android. So it's it's kind of it's not an RMM tool by any means, but it is a physical endpoint uh, management system. Uh, and so what's interesting about the announcement here at the NerdioCon event is that um, Nerdio has basically turned a tool that was really focused 100% in the past on virtual resources, virtual desktops, um, software as a service, et cetera. And now they have incorporated some physical device management capabilities here. So let's look at this from a bigger picture standpoint, Eric. You know, you've got the RMM tools out there that right now at least are very strong on physical device management, but they're really just kind of learning how to manage the cloud piece of things too. On the other side, you've got all of these sort of smaller companies, startup companies basically, um, getting uh, or introducing cloud management products, you know, Augment, Skykick, Jump Cloud. Those companies and their tools, very strong in the cloud management, not necessarily designed for the physical endpoint side of things. And so it's interesting that Nerdio now has a product that incorporates both of those functions into one interface. And uh, I had a chance to interview senior executives at Nerdio at the event here. They made a point of saying, we are not trying to turn our system into an RMM tool. But I also had a conversation over breakfast yesterday with one of the MSPs attending the conference here. And I passed along um, that statement to her. And she just kind of chuckled a little bit because from her perspective, it's like, I don't care what they call it. You know, they, they could call it an RMM. They can call it something else. All I know is that I am building a cloud-first managed services practice, and this tool, Nerdio Manager for MSP, is increasingly becoming the only interface I need to deal with on a daily basis to support my customers because I can deal with all of the cloud resources, and now I can deal with the parts of uh, endpoint management, device management that I kind of need to through that one interface. Um, and so an interesting sort of new development in the whole uh, cloud management uh, evolution and the evolution of managed services in general towards this cloud first model of the future. Boy, what a savvy strategy, right? Coming from, you know, where 
everyone wants to be the cloud, cloud platforms, cloud management, and creating the bridge to get there for the MSPs that still have requirements to manage infrastructure devices, um, you know, as well. And boy, I, I really like that strategy. I think it's, um, as, as the MSP that you were talking about stated, look, we're moving to the cloud. This helps me reduce complexity, simplify what I'm doing, uh, might even save on some licensing costs if, you know, they can reduce their, their spend on, on traditional RMM and management tools for some of that, some of that infrastructure and, you know, create that, that cloud first kind of perspective, right? From a service management perspective, uh, because as, as we all, I think are realizing now that, you know, or our MSPs are like me or recovering former MSP, right? We want to move to the cloud, right? We don't want to manage hardware and infrastructure uh, any longer than we have to. At least, you know, I would be thinking that way if I'm an MSP. I want to make sure that I'm uh, moving my clients' workloads to the cloud, securing those workloads, supporting that remote workforce, um, you know, reality that we're in now, because that's what uh, businesses are investing in is those technologies. And and if I don't have to, you know, go through capital expense to get clients to buy new laptops and well i'm not saying that we don't have to buy laptops and harder but you know what i'm saying rich is the complexity of the infrastructure that we can reduce moving more of that to the cloud and i can be much more strategic in my client um in my client discussions about helping them drive real change in their business uh, and helping them do that in a secure way um, that supports them over time and provides massive scalability why wouldn't i want to do that you know, it's interesting that you say that, Eric, because um, you, in your MSP days, you were very leading edge, always a very wise, forward thinking uh, practitioner. Um, when I was interviewing the Nerdio execs here, you know, I said, well, okay, you're not really um, taking on the RMM vendors, you say. I, I mean, you're sort of in a category of your own. Who do you consider your, your competition to be? And they said they consider maybe com competition isn't the precise word, but the, the biggest threat to their continued growth is all of the MSPs out there who are sort of resisting to resisting or slow to that march towards the cloud. Um, all of the MSPs here at the conference think very much like you just described. And there are plenty of other MSPs out there who do want to get to the cloud as quickly as they can, but there are a ton out there. Uh, and this is per Nerdio who either, you know, kind of have their head in the sand. They, they're, they're making money doing what they're doing on a device first kind of basis. They, they want to keep doing that or they know that someday they're gonna to have to adopt more of a cloud first posture, but they're kind of overwhelmed about what that means and how to get started and so on. So Nerdio kind of feels like the, the biggest competitive barrier that it has to breach is that inertia in the channel right now. There are a lot of companies that should be thinking the way uh, you, you were just a moment uh, ago there, but aren't. Yeah, I think it's just a maturity evolution over time, right? I mean, we all started you know, break fixing stuff, right? Now, you know, we don't have to do that anymore because it's, there's a lot less of that break fix mentality and and clients are now appreciating the value, the strategic value of their IT advisors in ways that they never have before. We've seen this in polls from McKinsey and company where they've taken uh, business leaders and, and asked them what their perception of technology is after coming through a couple of years of the pandemic and, you know, a, a majority of them say they see it as much more strategic instead of, you know, before they were always trying to cut costs, you know, on their IT spend and their technology all the time. And now, you know, the majority of them say we're seeing things much more strategically. We now see it as a driver of our business. And these are the folks that are investing in these cloud migrations and cybersecurity and, and enhanced remote workforce management and optimization. So. Uh, today's MSP, you know, is a lot different than, you know, when I was an MSP and, you know, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little jealous, you know, we had it, we had it tough back then. We were breaking, you know, rocks with sledgehammers and, and now we've got all these cool platforms and, you know, vendors like Nerdio coming up with these great uh, uh, solutions to help us really focus on that cloud migration, which is the future of technology and, and what we'll be supporting in the future. Well, you know what, Eric, um, it, uh, integrating Nerdio Manager for MSP with Microsoft Endpoint Manager, it reduces swivel chairing for the technicians, it increases their 
uh, efficiency and maybe the service delivery team's capacity as, as a result, which is actually kind of connected to your tip of the week. Yeah, Rich, I, swivel chairing, I like that. That's, uh, I'm gonna steal that from you. <laughs> so the tip of the week is, it's time to reevaluate your service team's capacity to support your 2022 growth strategy. I did a webinar earlier today, Rich, all about you know MSP growth hacks, 2022 growth strategy, how we have to swivel in our chairs now, differently, different use now to focus on strategic growth, really staying in front of what today's buyers are investing in uh, as a result of coming through the pandemic. We touched on this on the program before, you know, we're looking at things like cloud migration and management, cybersecurity, uh, enhanced cybersecurity and remote workforce support and management and maintenance. What are we doing as a collective, uh, uh, you know, channel? I'm talking to the channel pros, the IT providers, the MSPs, to look at our service team's ability to support this new transition. You know, the top story today is a great example of us having to look at things differently in order to support that growth. So if we're still looking internally at ourselves and our service team as kind of reactive firefighters and we're not doing the things that can prepare us to take advantage of these opportunities, i.e. optimizing our platforms, reducing complexity in our own support systems, not to mention our customers' infrastructures, documenting our processes and procedures, integrating our platforms better, reducing the total number of windows, right? <laughs> like you said, that we're having to work through and making sure that we're leveraging automation to its full potential to give our tired service teams the ability to have a little bit better work-life balance, to not have to work so hard and to expand their capacity to bring on new clients, right? The onboarding process, so critical. I was uh, speaking with a brand new uh, partner client of mine today, and they were talking about having to shut down their marketing and sales efforts for the next two months just so they can onboard two new clients because their service team is taxed. They need to focus on improving that and that's kind of why we're talking so we can, i can help them with that but boy we need to make sure that we can scale i mean why wouldn't we be able to bring on new clients as we need to in order to support our growth strategy well these are the things that are going to keep us from doing it it starts and stops with the service team from help desk to projects to the deployment team the onboarding team if we don't have that uh tuned properly then we tend to run into these situations where we're stopping and starting our sales efforts. I mean, I'm a victim of that too. And our MSP, before we figured out what we were doing, you know, we had those same challenges. So it's time to stop and look at 2022 and say, this is the year of change. This is where we're pivoting to support what these uh, uh, clients are buying. And we need to overhaul areas of our business in order to lead instead of react and not have clients feel like they've outgrown our abilities and go with someone else. Boy, that uh, that story from uh, your, your new client there really gets right to it, doesn't it? Because basically you can reevaluate your service team's capacity after you had to shut down sales and marketing for a few months because that capacity was insufficient, or you can get out in front of that now um, start, you know, being a little proactive, uh, anticipating the kind of growth that uh, you're aiming for and have built into your plans for the year and making sure that you have enough capacity to avoid shutting down sales and marketing or alienating a customer, uh, et cetera. So yeah, you know, wise advice, basically. Um, good time uh, at the beginning of the year um, to take a look at, uh, at your capacity and make sure that uh, it can keep pace with uh, with where the company is going. And I say this, we both say this knowing, of course, um, that if your capacity is insufficient, finding new employees is painfully difficult right now. So I do understand that there are people who would like more capacity, but are having trouble actually hiring it. But that said, um, um, thinking uh, proactively, thinking in advance uh, about what you need to support the customers you want um, is a good idea. Yeah, so let's do that, everybody. 
All right. Well, that leaves us with time for just one more story uh, this week here, uh, Eric. And I like to think of this as uh, being a story about the, the goat goat, as in the greatest of all time goats. Um, this comes to us from Virginia, Henry County, Virginia, in fact, where um, sheriff's deputies uh, were uh, investigating a domestic dispute. Somebody involved in that dispute fled on foot, pursued um, by the, uh, the two deputies and a goat. Uh, and long story short, basically, the, the goat was really pretty kind of determined to remain a, a part of this pursuit. And uh, the, the pursuit ended with the suspect in custody because the, uh, the sheriff and the goat kind of came at him from opposite sides and trapped him, uh, enabling the sheriffs to, uh, to arrest this, uh, this uh, escaping perpetrator there. So they got a, a critical assist from their deputy goat, uh, and uh, uh, apparently the uh, the sheriff's department is very thankful. So deputy Bob had a hand in taking down the perp? Nice. <laughs> nice indeed. I want to emphasize again for the audience here, this was not planned. Um, <laughs> Eric is doing this on the fly, and uh, and well done. Well done again, Eric. Uh, well, folks, that is all the time. I get them in once in a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is all the time we've got this week for you on the five minute roundup. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be back again next week with another episode for you. Uh, you know, these days we are both a video and a podcast. So if you're watching the video, but you're, you're into podcasts, um, go to wherever you get your podcasts, whether that's Stitcher or Google or Apple or Spotify, you name it, you're going to find us there. Please become a subscriber. Take an extra couple of seconds to rate and review. That'll enable folks just like you to find the show a little more easily. If you're actually listening to the podcast now, you can watch us uh, on video too. We're on YouTube. The easiest way to find us is on the Channel Pro Network channel on YouTube. Uh, you can become a subscriber there too. If you click the little bell icon, you'll even get notified when the new episodes go up. Um, you want to read more, a lot more, in fact, about uh, Nerdio and what they announced this week at NerdioCon and other news from the show. You want to get great business growth advice for your company on a daily basis, please visit channelpronetwork.com on a daily basis because we've got great new content for you going up there all the time. And to learn more about Eric and the work he does with his clients, you want to visit ericsimpson.com. That is E-R-I-C-K simpson.com. So once again, folks, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to see you again in a, in a week. Until then, please enjoy the rest of your week. Eric and I are enjoying the rest of your week already. Already. I